In previous videos, we looked at creating validators that were in their own class. But what if you wanted to add validation without creating a new class or an additional file? Or maybe you want to conveniently and easily validate private members of a class. Well, that's where the iSelf validator interface comes in. It brings all the power and usefulness of Odin validator into any custom class with ease and convenience. Let's imagine that you have a spawner object that spawns enemy units that makes use of Unity's navigation system. For this object to work well, it should be placed on a nav mesh, have prefabs to spawn, and have a time delay between spawns. Now, if you have several spawners throughout a scene or in multiple scenes, it can be easy to not get the setup just quite right, which is a perfect use for some helpful validation, and in this case, the iSelf validator interface. To implement the interface, we first need to add the namespace serenix.odinspector to our class. We can then add the interface and implement the required validate function. Then, just like any other validator, all the validation logic goes into the validate function. We first need to check if the spawner object is on or at least really close to a nav mesh. And we can do this with the nav mesh dot sample position function. We'll pass in the position of the spawner and give it a small radius around that position to check for a nav mesh. If the function returns false, we can display an error message with result.addError and include a message as a string. Our spawner might also have a small delay between each instantiation. We can quickly check that this value is non-zero and positive. Once again, displaying an error message if the value isn't correct. Our spawner also won't work correctly if there are no prefabs assigned to the spawner. So we can first check if the list is null or has a count of zero. If neither of those are true, we might then want to check each item in the list. We can use a for loop to iterate through the list, checking if the item is null, indicating that the slot is empty or a prefab may have been deleted. If we do find an empty slot, we can display a warning message with the slot number. If we save our work and return to Unity, we can see our validation messages displayed in the inspector, on the validation gizmo, as well as in the validator window, allowing us to quickly and easily resolve the issues. Using the iCell validator is that easy and that useful. It is worth noting that validation only runs in the editor and in edit mode. So if the value changes during play mode or in a standalone build, messages will not get displayed.